transmitter, monitor, a couple of batteries, propeller. Oh, what the hell? Joke, we're totally gonna have to use all of it. F Two batteries. Okay, I cannot come up with anything else. You're gonna have to watch the video. Look, play with the mind that this is the water line. And we have the little drone going down. It's going down. It got the propellers right here. Most companies have a little guy standing on the shore. And they have a cable running all the way down to the drone again. And this cable is literally 100 meters long. It's ridiculous. Probably better, but ridiculous. All right, so here's how we plan to do it. We're gonna have the cable only go up to the surface. Here we have a little uh, flotation device and inside this box we'll have the receiver and we'll have the video transmitter that transmits the signal back to me with the receiver and the handheld transmitter. Now that's the idea. So this cable will only limit the depth in which we can go to the bottom of the surface, right? For this video, a three meter cable will totally work. Do you all remember the 3D printed drone? I quite literally grabbed the components, I threw them in here. All we have is a power distribution board in the middle, a power distribution board in the middle, four speed controllers, each going to one motor. This motor has a propeller on it. Let's focus on that motor. The motor will start spinning in one direction, but it will it's a bi-directional software, so when I pull the stick up, it spins the other way. Basically, all the motors will be responsible for the pitch, forward and backwards. We're just modifying the roof. Alright, at this point I think it's time for the main cable. This is the wire that goes from the drone up to the flotation device. A total of eight wires. That's good. It means that we have two available ones if we ever in the future wish to add something. Now, what I've done so far is I've done the programming on the transmitter. Uh, I'm gonna show you that later. But so far I've added the uh, power distribution board. I've added the camera. And so what I'm about to start doing right now is I'm gonna take the lid. I'll make a hole for the wire. I'll make that waterproof. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I did add lights. I used the same technique as on the surfboard. There's a thick silicone layer on all the LEDs, so that's why they are waterproof. The, the long cable then goes up to the flotation device, pretty much just another container, 3D printed, yes. And we're definitely jamming a bunch of electronics in here. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this. Dude, it's too big. Why the fuck is he leaking water? Okay, what have I done? I've sealed the inside better. I have sealed a few questionable areas. You see, what I feared just happened. It's seriously not very good. Let me show you. There's a semi-small leak right there. And it's not from the motor wires, which is exactly why we have to waterproof the entire thing. Twenty minutes later. No way. After all that work, Waterproofing with spray paint, glue, silicone, modifying perimeters, all those fancy words. 
the waterproof underwater drone is finally just leaking a little bit. Yes, <laughs> uh, you know, that's, uh, that's it. I did add the 360 camera mount, the LED lights, some googly eyes. I spray painted the entire thing green because I didn't have yellow. Let's head out. The problem I see right now is that this place used to be super clear. I've shot underwater here before and it was just crystal clear and now it's not. So something happened, I don't know, during the year uh, to cause the water to be a lot darker, which obviously is going to affect our, our viewing distance. So I guess today is just going to be more of a test of the mechanical side and hopefully I can find another place that is you know, far clearer. So today, I guess we're just gonna have to do a more mechanical test and see if the motors are working and uh, not care too much about the footage because uh, I don't think we're gonna see shit in this water. Lock and loaded. You can see if I pitch it down, it's pretty much just a dark... Yeah, you can't see shit. To make it pitch down and then push the pitch. It's nearly impossible to follow my logic at this point. First of all, it's loaded with weights. Way too much weight. For part two, we are totally making it smaller. Point is, doesn't look like much, but this way of control surprised us all by not being a complete failure. I have tested enough, this works. We are going to see an underwater drone. So I'm at this place, I guess it's a bit better, but not really. But nonetheless, we'll be able to see the mechanics, control it and, and see how it behaves in the water. I also realized that the lights that I put in are equivalent to a flashlight in a black hole. But who cares, it got googly eyes. First test in reasonably clear water. It's not quite heavy enough. I think I just shorted the motor. I'm so lucky. All right, round two. And it stopped working. Not long after, it went full haywire. That cannot be good. It's like right about to be ice on the lake. And that's when Simon decides, oh yeah, let's make an underwater drone. That's smart. <laughs> Turns out water is a pain in the ass to keep out. And that's why for part two, yes, we can make this way smaller. I'm adding four kilograms of weight just to keep this not afloat. That's a miscalculation on my side. I was thinking it would be better to be safe than sorry. It's easier to add weight than the other way around. But now in hindsight, it would be way better to keep the volume down to minimize the displaced water volume. And we can still use the same electronics. Everything is working fine. Uh, well, except the electric speed controllers, they, they burned up. Thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. This is the GS66 Stealth, super sleek and surprisingly light. Up to a Core i9 processor with 8 cores and 5.3 GHz performance to play the most challenging games. Blazing fast 300Hz display, only 3 milliseconds response time, so you will have no excuses for being garbage at the game. Oh, this is the best part, a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery. But Simon, why didn't you show more 360 footage? I mean, that perspective is just super cool. And I agree, like you can get some of the coolest shots by a 360 camera, like a floating camera in the air. Turns out that doesn't work underwater. The drone literally just disappeared, it's ridiculous. Uh, the next video should be up in the next, I don't know, three years. See you then, bye.